call this, the comeback kid, which I love it. And uh, Tommy is here today. Tommy's one of my top reps at the Elliott Group. I want to tell you, he was a student for probably four years before he, he started working here. And he's got a pretty crazy story. I would say crazy cool, because I think the bigger the test, the bigger the testimony. And obviously, I'll let Tommy, you know, save his story, but I'll just give you the highlight reel to me. Some people, you know, I say they're dead people walking. They have a dead life. They got a shitty mindset. They're dead internally. But there's, they're not dead. Tommy really died. His girlfriend brought him back to life. Tommy got plugged into the Elliott group, uh, rose to the ranks, the top in his company in sales, broke every record, crushed it, killed it, recreated his life, put on about 50 pounds of muscle. I mean, just uh, did a lot of really cool stuff. I want to share Tommy's story with you. By the way, I'm going to ask my editors, really important why we're making this video, to make sure we show some before and afters with Tommy. It's important. I think pictures, you know, when somebody tells a story, they, uh, you know, you're like, oh, okay, I get it. No, 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 you, you, you don't get it. So we're going to show some pictures along the way, right, um, of Tommy's journey, which is super cool. So Tommy, love you, bro. Um, introduce and let it rip, buddy. I want you to change some lives today. Let's do it. Well, my name is Tommy Proko Povich. I have a Polish last name. I wasn't born in this country. And I think it's really important for me to touch on this because then it pretty much le leads on to why I was where I was at, why I felt like a loser, and I just felt like stuck. And uh, when I moved down here to this country, I was born in Venezuela, moved down here to the country, moved to Florida. I lived in Florida for 29 years uh, before moving out here to Arizona. Uh, but growing up, I was someone that I was high energy. Um, I was always very curious, always wanted more out of life. But then coming from a Spanish background, um, my mom was Hispanic, my dad was Polish, all moved down here from the same country from Venezuela. Um, they came from a very uh, scarcity, lack mindset. They didn't really have the tools. They did the best that they could. Um, you know, kind of similar to your story, Andy. Um, whenever I had a pair of clothes, like, that was the clothes I was wearing for that week. If I ripped it, I was in trouble. So it was just money was always an issue. And I remember when that was the case, there was a lot of arguments. I mean, my, my parents split when I was 10 years old, and it was due to money. It was just not having enough money, and it was always a hassle. My mom was a cleaning lady taking care of three kids. My dad kind of left, and he was kind of going back and forth. And, um, and, yeah, that's basically, like, my childhood. I, I just wanted more. I knew I didn't want to be like that, right? I didn't want to live that way, and I, I wanted more. I wanted nice things. Um, so fast forward, going through school, I was a straight-A student. In high school, I had a 4.25 GPA in high school, and I wanted to actually become a doctor. Mm -hmm. um, I was going into a lot of medical fields, um, a lot of schooling, and during that time, um, of course, when I was born in a different country, I was an illegal immigrant for about 20 years. I couldn't get, once I graduated high school, I didn't have a driver's license, I didn't have a social. I mm -hmm. couldn't really do anything. And that pretty much touches on where the active addiction came from because it's like, it says the devil is an idle time, mm -hmm. right? And when you're idling and kind of drifting and not knowing what to do, that's when he kind of gets you, right? When you're not chasing something bigger than yourself. And not being able to go to college uh, and I had two scholarships, but I couldn't claim them because I didn't have a license or a social. I basically was sitting at home for three years, and um, that's what got me in trouble. You know, I met some people, tried something, and became addicted when I was like 17 years old. And then that's when it started happening. So from 17 all the way up till I was like 30 years old, 31 years old, I went really deep into active addiction. Um, I couldn't stop. The moment that I tried that, um, and it was opiates, right? Painkillers, first I started off with that. And um, girls, and I just kind of started losing myself in my flesh. I just wanted to feel like wanted in a way, and I just wanted to feel good, right? Since I wasn't getting that from chasing a bigger life, I was chasing to numb myself even more because I wasn't happy with my current situation. Mm. And um, I struggled with money for some time until I got into a little bit of sales, like doing phone sales, worked for uh, Royal Caribbean, Carnival Cruise Lines. Um, I was their top rep there. I was doing very well with them. And then, um, you know, the first overdose that I had during that period of time was 
uh, when I was working at Carnival Cruise Line, ended up overdosing in my house. And I woke up two hours later in a puddle of drool. And the reason why I overdose is I got off painkillers because painkillers were very expensive, especially during the pill mill time back in 2007, 2009. Everyone was on opiates, right? Painkillers became very expensive very quickly. And then I turned to heroin, fentanyl. Then I became an IV user for seven years. I was addicted to using needles. Um, I had that overdose. And after that overdose, I was actually sent to the hospital for 20 days because they found an infection in my blood. I had yeast and uh, bacteria in my blood. And the way the doctor told me was, I basically had a 40% 40 chance of dying. Um, I was either gonna be put on that dialysis or I would need open heart surgery. It wasn't that I was gonna be fine. Those were the three options. It's like, you're gonna have one of these three. It was kind of scary because I was there for 20 days. I was hooked up to IVs with like, um, they were pumping bacterial and antifungal stuff to kill any bacteria and um, fungus that was in my blood because they found it. And then they did the ultrasound and, um, or the, whatever it's called. And um, they didn't find anything on the valves of my heart. Then they saw my blood, my blood was fine. And then I healed very quickly. And um, that was definitely a God moment looking back at that because I was, wow. I was healed. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video. As you're hearing me talk to Tommy about his life, you know, how, you know, all the way from death to overcoming drugs to, you know, your girlfriend saving you, and now you are one of the top coaches at the Elliott Group. Um, maybe some of you are the comeback kid. Maybe you're overcoming adversity. Maybe you haven't overcome anything yet, but you're ready to, right? I mean, it's not always that you're on the backside. Hey, number one, if you are, I want to hear the story. Let's get you to the next level. But maybe today's the day where you say, hey, man, enough's enough. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, and I'm ready to change. If you're ready to make a change, I'm going to do this, and this is important to me. Tommy's one of my top coaches. Um, I'm putting his cell phone number below. Now, this is really simple. If you want to become great at sales, if you want to learn how to build a business, if you want to crush it and kill it, if you resonate with Tommy and you're like, dude, I need a guy like that in my life. Okay, cool. Right? This guy right here, um, him and his wife, they're amazing um, like I said, some of the top coaches at the Elliott Group, amazing, very good friends of mine, they're family. And anybody that's a resource to me, Tommy lives to help people go to the next level. And his wife, which she's not on here, but she's smoking hot. She's super cool. Yeah. So uh, below, you see his number. You guys can shoot him a text message, introduce yourself, give him your name, tell um, how, how you would like him to help you or, or what you need help with, and Tommy will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. Love you guys. Let's get back to the video. Um, even though I didn't feel, by doing all those drugs, I, I didn't feel the presence of God in my life. Like, I was completely disconnected, which, looking back now, I don't even know how I survived mm -hmm. not feeling like the Holy Spirit or God in my heart. And um, so after that time, that wasn't enough to stop using. Addiction is so crazy that I was still using even at the hospital. I was having people bring me stuff at the hospital because I was addicted. Like, it doesn't matter if you're dying, you're still gonna keep using if you're addicted. Um, so that happened, I was still using, got out, had another overdose happen um, in 2016. And again, by myself, my dog actually woke me up by licking me in the face and I lost another hour of time. Woke up with a, a bruise all in my face, again, in a puddle of drool, um, you know, and that was, it wasn't a waking moment for me, I was still using. Then, um, the third overdose happened back in 2018, January. This is before me and Sierra actually got together. We met in 2017. She went back. Luckily, we didn't get together at that point because I was still a wreck. But I was always holding like a mask on my face. I was always like a chameleon. Like whatever I had to do, whatever I had to say for someone to know that I was okay, that I wasn't crying out for help, that I wasn't using drugs, I would do it. I would make sure I had eye drops, making sure like my face was okay, making sure that I wasn't exposing myself to people because I was still in, I thought I was like, you know, a functioning drug addict. And that was the lie I was telling myself, but a lot of people knew and I was still trying to hide that. Um, in 2018, I overdosed at work at Royal Caribbean. Um, they had this thing called ox time and you can only go as much as eight minutes and it was 45 minutes. And then they went searching for me in the building and found me collapsed on the bathroom floor. Uh, before I actually overdosed, and I remember this vividly, I flushed everything in the toilet before I went down, and it was like a lag time of like two, three minutes, and then next thing I knew, I woke up on a stretcher.
with the paramedics, like, what happened? I'm like, oh, it's my blood sugar or something. Like, that's that's what happened. Um, but then told the doctor and everything, and everyone was very concerned for me. I literally had my whole family there, like, dude, you gotta, you gotta stop. Like, you're literally killing yourself. Then I actually got clean for a few months. Um, life was better. Um, I was doing very well at Royal Caribbean. It was like almo almost like nothing happened. And then me and Sierra, my wife now, uh, started dating and she, she was long distance. She was kind of living in a different uh, area in Florida, in Tallahassee, because she was a student. And life was good at that point. I was making decent money. Relationship was great. And then um, during that period of time, going through that, uh, I was in role criminal for about uh, two years more. And then COVID hit. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is where like my journey on the self-development side started really happening and where I wanted to be better. I was hiding everything from Sierra. She didn't really know. Um, I stopped using needles, so I thought that was a plus. I, though I thought, right? Yeah. Um, I was still using drugs. Um, and then during that time, once COVID hit, I mean, the travel industry just completely fell apart. There was no travel industry. And then that's when I decided I wanted to get into car sales, mm -hmm. right? Um, this is like later in the year in 2018, like around October mm -hmm. of 2020. And um, that's when I went into car sales and I had a really hard time my very first month. Our rent was 2000 a month. Mm -hmm. We're hurting for money. Went into car sales and the very first month I made $600. Yeah. And then uh, that feeling of seeing Sierra like, babe, what are we going to do? Like, you're not making any money. Like, we're hurting here. We have to pay bills. I'm asking family for money. And now I felt like I was going back to how my parents were when I was younger, just always stressing about money. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm becoming a mom and dad with Sierra. Like, this is not what I want. And then what I did was is I went on YouTube, mm -hmm. and I typed in, like, how to sell cars. And then your video popped up. And um, texted the number on there. Someone reached out to me, bought a course. That course that I paid $300 for made me $17,500 the very next month. And that's when I knew. I'm like, this is it. This is how I'm going to become rich. Like, this is how I'm going to become wealthy. Like, I just have to learn everything what this guy knows and then just apply in my life and just be very structured and, you know, not use drugs and do all these things. And even though I had certain moments of sobriety, I, would, I was a chronic relapser. It was almost like the devil wanted to take me out. It's like, no, 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 come back, come back. And it's like my old life kept pulling me back. Um, so I was training on your programs for a while. It wasn't until like the following year in 2021 that I actually went to my first event when you guys were at the elementary school. Mm -hmm. And that event completely changed my life. And I remember when I went to that event, I'm like, I want to work for you, mm -hmm. like right away, right? And, um, you know, me and you were talking for a little bit. And, and that year when I was in car sales, I did, I made $100,000 in five and a half months. I finished out the year with like 170 and that was the most money I ever made. I mean, I've never made more what than What did you weigh back then? Because I remember you had, a, you had your shirt unbuttoned. I was weighing 100. After you were straight Miami. Like 148, 150 pounds. Yeah, so 150. What do you wear right now? 200. Yeah, so like 50 pounds, yeah. Mm -hmm. So about 50 pounds lighter. You're starting to learn how to make money. So then what happens? So then went to the event, wanted to come work here. And I'm like, I got to do anything I can to work here. And then one day I had the bright idea to go get a needle again. And that was like the last time this was back in October of 2021. You had offered me, it's like, all right, Tommy, come down here in January and you could come work here, move your stuff, come here. And that's when I had overdose again. And during that time I was at lunch. I was the fourth overdose and the last one I had. And Sierra's calling on my name based on what she told me and she didn't hear me and she got panicky and again she had no idea I ever had touched needles before because I was hiding everything um she broke down the door and found me like a pretzel in between the toilet and the tub there's like this little gap right there between yeah, the toilet super and, the tub. Small. and she found me there and she found like this like cord wrapped around my neck I guess it got over my neck but it was for me to tie out my arm and she saw the needle on my arm, like she was like freaked out, was purple in the face. And she picked me up with adrenaline, put my head down and started giving me CPR and brought me back after like 10 minutes. And I woke up to the paramedics, like trying to break the door down from my That's front so door. Crazy. 
and she saved my life. If Sierra wasn't there, I would have died that time. I think God was like, like, dude, this is your last chance. Like, I'm putting this girl in your life. Hopefully she's the one that like helps you. Mm -hmm. um, so then that happened. I still ended up using that same night, even after Sierra was breaking down crying. And that's the thing with addiction. It doesn't matter how much you love someone, how much people care. Addiction is a disease that's designed to kill you. And it will kill you no matter who stands in the way. It has to come from something bigger than within yourself to want to change. And I wanted to change so bad. I wanted it. But I was still very deep into the addiction. So me and Sierra, when that happened, I stopped reaching out to you. I felt a lot of shame and guilt. I'm like, I can't work for this guy. Like, look, I can't even fix myself. And then out of nowhere, February of 2022, we're like, babe, let's just pack and go. Let's just go to Arizona. Yeah, but it's like, I ran into your girl on an airplane. Yes. And you didn't even know I moved out here. No. You had no idea. I'm like, we're just going to move there. She's like, so wait, you're going to move across from South Florida all the way to the Southwest on a maybe that you might work for Andy Elliott? I'm like, yes, let's just do it. And then we attached a 5x8 trailer on a Corolla, towed 1,500 pounds, took us 55 hours driving over here. We had to borrow five grand. We were broke. Mm -hmm. um, came out here with our dog, two cats, and I had a snake at the time, driving 55 hours across the, the country. Came out here. I was basically depleting everything we had. I was doing some phone sales over the phone um, for insurance just to help me out a little bit, but I wasn't really making a lot of money, like mm -hmm. 600 to 1000 bucks a week. Moved out here, and then we're living here now March 30th. Sometime in April, she's flying back to Miami for a job, and you just so happen to be on the same flight. And she was sitting next to me. And not only the same flight, but she was sitting here, and you guys were one of the last people to get on. Mm -hmm. The two empty seats ended up being you and Jackie. Mm -hmm. and, um, and she hadn't met you in person yet. Like, she's only seen you through us talking, the, you know, when we send voice notes to each other, and just from social media. And she was like, oh, my God, like, this is crazy. Like, we moved out here for you guys, and you hadn't known yet, and then you guys are sitting on a plane. Mm -hmm. And you know what's even crazier? At that moment when you found out, like, whoa, Tommy's living here. Like, I don't remember the exact conversation because I wasn't there. But you told her, hey, tell Tommy. And Sierra told me, she's like, tell Tommy to stop being scared of me and tell him to come meet me at this church called Impact Church. Mm -hmm. And that is so powerful because, you know, God works through people in a very crazy way, right? And God wants a relationship with you. And that was the church Later that year, in December, that became baptized and found my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he, like, worked through you and you guys. And that was very powerful. So came out here, and I don't think you remember the conversation, but when I met you there, you're like, Tommy, you're too skinny. Yeah, I'm, I'm clean. You're like, you're too skinny. So you told me, he's like, okay, I want you to keep recreating. You gave me a year, one year. I want you to kill it in, in, in any store, in a dealership. Um, you said become number one and I need you to stay clean and gain 20 pounds. I'm like, okay. And when you told me that, actually, I felt very let down. I'm like, dude, I thought I was going to get the job. Like everything I've been through, like you're going to put me through that test still. And, um, that's when I got a job at a big Toyota store. And when I got down there, I didn't know how many salespeople there were. There was 120. And I'm like, dude, 120 salespeople now have to be number one. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. Um, I bought a couple other courses, went to another event, got started there July 1st of 20, um, 22 and became the number one salesman by my third month. Mm -hmm. And I was ranked number three out of 33 locations and the multiple hundred thousand dollar, like it was just a, a multiple six figures that year recreated. Not only was I the number one salesman, but I gained 38 pounds of muscle mm -hmm. And I remember once I hit over 20, I'm like, yo, I'm going to get more muscle. I'm going to go to 40, you know? I'm going to get jacked. Yeah. And um, I did that and stayed clean and uh, got baptized. And that's when everything started changing. Like, I, my relationship with me and Sierra, like, me not using drugs, like, like really working on my mindset and finding myself, like, like, to understand, like, who I am. And I do got what it takes to be great. And that was probably the best thing you could have done for me. Um, so cool. Because it really rewired my brain, right? 
Yeah, so anybody watching this, right, no matter what they're struggling with, right, what, what were some reasons why you kept going? I mean, a lot of people quit along the way. You know, you, you, know, you, you see people that, you know, used. And by the way, you said an addiction. It could be porn. It yes. could be cheating. It could be lust. It could be, I mean, drugs, drinking. I mean, it could be anything, right? Like, what would you say to anybody who's struggling with something, a stronghold, a vice, a vice? You know what I mean? Something like, I can't get past that. I just can't seem... You know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, when it comes to that. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video. As you're hearing me talk to Tommy about his life, you know, how, you know, all the way from death to overcoming drugs to, you know, your girlfriend saving you. And now you are one of the top coaches at the Elliott Group. Um, maybe some of you are the comeback kid. Maybe you're overcoming adversity. Maybe you haven't overcome anything yet, but you're ready to, Right. I mean, it's not always that you're on the backside. Hey, number one, if you are, I want to hear the story. Let's get you to the next level. But maybe today's the day where you say, hey, man, enough's enough. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, and I'm ready to change. If you're ready to make a change, I'm going to do this, and this is important to me. Tommy's one of my top coaches. Um, I'm putting his cell phone number below. Now, this is really simple. If you want to become great at sales, if you want to learn how to build a business, if you want to crush it and kill it, if you resonate with Tommy and you're like, dude, I need a guy like that in my life. Okay, cool, right? This guy right here, um, him and his wife, they're amazing. Um, like I said, some of the top coaches at the Elliott Group, amazing, very good friends of mine, they're family. And anybody that's a resource to me, Tommy lives to help people go to the next level. And his wife, which she's not on here, but she's smoking hot. She's super cool. Yeah. So uh, below, you see his number. You guys can shoot him a text message, introduce yourself, give him your name, tell um, how, how you would like him to help you or or what you need help with, and Tommy will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. Love you guys. Let's get back to the video. Why I kept failing was, and you probably hear this in recovery, but people, places, and things. Also, you want to have God in your life. You, you need to turn that over into something bigger than yourself. You can't do it alone. You're not going to do it on your will alone. Anyone that tells you that, hey, you're strong enough, you can do this, and like not have any help, that's when the devil is going to work through you especially if you're someone that self-sabotages a lot, you're just basically giving your power away. And that's what I was doing for so long. I was giving my power away to the drugs, to this life, just feeding my flesh, when all I had to do was just channel that into the future, into the person that I wanted to become. And once I started making that mindset shift, don't underestimate the power of a good circle of people, mm. of God and that's a good true. woman. And by me really diving deep into this culture and the company and everyone here like no one drinks alcohol here no one does drugs here everyone's into working out and and treating each other good and love and i think that once i came down here i felt so much love like you guys care for everyone cares about each other so much here and the pressure of wanting to become something great and how competitive everything is like i was missing that right and um of course i was missing god and and then me and sierra sierra one of the things that hurt me the most was when Sierra's like, when are you gonna stop being a loser? She would call me a worm. The reason why she used that expression because I was consistently relapsing and going into withdrawal. Relapsing, going into withdrawal. And when you're withdrawing, you're physic I was physically withdrawing, I didn't wanna get out of bed. So I was wrapped up in a blanket, or it's cold or sweating or just like, so she would call me a worm. And she's like, when are you gonna stop being a loser? Like, when are you actually gonna wake up? Like you have like, like you have, like she saw the potential in me from everything that we'd done and the moments that she were, she was able to see the true side of me mm -hmm. and that hurt. Like, honestly, when you have someone that loves you and is supposed to be with you for life saying, dude, you're being a freaking loser. Mm -hmm. Like you need to wake up. Like that hurt me a lot. And then that's when I packed all my stuff and moved out here. Yeah. You needed that. Mm -hmm. You needed like something to piss you off. Yeah. And it really did. It hurt me most. Like. It wasn't so much like, oh, you're such an idiot, this and that, but it was more like the way she said it, and it was like the tone. She's like, why are you going to stop being such a loser? Like, just disappointed, mm -hmm. and then that hurt. Yeah, she's not mad. She was no. let down. Yeah, let down. Yeah, so I want you to think about something, this, and this is super important, and by the way, remember what I said, two things. Number one, how do they follow you on Instagram if they want to meet it? Yeah, so my username is Thomas Proco, T-H-O-M-A-S-P-R-O-C-O. -O. Yep, and then you guys, you see the number on the screen. I'm going to put it here. 
this is Tommy's personal cell phone number. And you say, well, why would you give out your personal cell phone number? Well, that's what we do. I mean, we live to change other people's lives. He said, you know, true leadership is living for a bigger vision than yourself. He said, people, they can't beat addiction. Addiction is made to beat you. The only way to beat it is to live for something bigger than yourself. Yes. That's what he said. And that's the truth. That's how I stop being a loser. That's how you stop being a loser. That's how everyone I know who is kicking ass and winning, how they stop being a loser is they decided to live for something that was bigger than themselves. Yes. And they're just on fire and they're on another level and they care more. And that's what everybody wants. And he said, I want you to remember what he said. He said, there's some things that you can't underestimate that a lot of people do. The power of a good woman or man, you know, having the right person to, to, to run with in life as mm -hmm. in a relationship. Um, so the power of a good woman. Um, secondly, your circle. He's like, dude, like people underestimate the power of a good circle. You know, how did he find the circle that he's in? He paid for self-development. Self-development got him around good people. Good people, he started to realize that, man, I operate differently, think differently, act differently, believe different when I'm around these kind of people. So you want to naturally go to those people and get away from the old people. And then places. You got to go to new places. Um, you know, I'm not saying, like, some of you just need to quit going to this, these places, and you can live where you're at. He uprooted and moved across the country. You went to a total new place. So did I. Isn't that crazy? You know, it's like, it's like model and proven practices, right? Okay, if you're watching this right now and you want to create a life and a story and impact, you want to make more money than you've ever made, you want to build your dreams, you want to do all these things, okay? Good chance you're not going to be able to do it on your own, okay? Everybody needs a coach. Everybody needs somebody to push them. Everybody needs someone to poke at him like Sierra, stop being a loser. But also she stayed with you. She, she loved did. you. You knew you knew the reason why it hurt so much is because you knew she didn't want you to stay a loser. And so it'd have been easier. It, you would have been okay had she gotten mad at you and said, Stop being a loser, so you could have been mad back. There's nothing to be mad at her. She always wanted you to be great. Mm -hmm. That's why it was so heartbreaking. Yeah. That's why that but he did though. And he still continues to. And now I see the way his wife looks at him, right? She looks up to you. She loves you. She, she chases him around. She loves this new man. And he's just getting warmed up. And the cool thing about it is every day, Tommy in our office, he's here at the Elliott Group, he runs around on the phone all day long. He's got that phone glued to his face. Either someone's in, in front of him face to face, and he's just constantly pouring out just everything that he has into him to help them change their life. And he's extremely smart. He knows how we built a big business. He knows how to build brands. He knows how to build everything. He knows how to sell. He knows how to close. He knows how to lead. He knows his standards are crazy high. Isn't it crazy how you can literally be a person, have the lowest standards, and just hate everything about you? And then one day, you're the person with the highest standards, and everybody wants to know how they can be just like you. It's so crazy. And mm -hmm. I think so that's the good news. Is you know because you talked about the Bible a lot. The old is gone, the new has come. The Apostle Paul turned you know from Saul into Paul. You know from the Christian killer, he took the Bible the furthest. It is so crazy how the people that have just you know had the craziest tests or circumstances or the craziest things happen to them, they end up going the furthest. And I don't know about you, but like I like the movie Rocky because Rocky was getting the hell beat out of him and then came back and won. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes a movie where somebody starts out winning and then they end up winning. Right. <laughs> it's like <laughs> there's there's nothing to see. The guy won the whole movie. That was boring. People love it when you come back. And so I wanted to share Tommy with every single one of you. Um, not only is he one of the greatest coaches at the Elliott Group, he's amazing. He's a great husband. He loves his wife. We went down, and uh, you know we were there when his wife got married. Uh, we went down to his honeymoon in Puerto Vallarta, right? Had a good time. Yeah. I mean, dude, life is good, dude. And the crazy thing is, is when I saw him, I was like, you're not going to do drugs no more. Put on 50 pounds. <laughs> Get your shit together, you know? And he did. He did. Yeah, and so, like, who's next? You know what I'm saying? And so if you're watching this and you've made it to the end of this, that means that you truly are like, man, dude, like I'm going to go harder. Mm -hmm. I'm going to change. I'm going to recreate my life. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to become somebody who's going to change a lot of people. And Tommy changes tons of lives every day. 
And I love that. I think you're qualified to do the same thing. If you want to connect with Tommy, make sure that you text the number below. Okay, you guys can reach out directly to him. And uh, he's amazing. And dude, number one, I'm super proud of you. Okay, All right, crazy proud of you. And he's getting jacked. Let me see your arms. Let me see. So yeah, Tommy's a savage. 200 pounds, baby. 200 pounds and one of the most loving guys I've ever seen. You know what I mean? I love it. He wears his heart right on his sleeve. Um, you know, just just crazy. It's it's just unreal. You know, and you're just getting warmed up. All Dude, of us I'm are. I'm just getting started, man. Yeah. Well, and it's crazy. And so I think that's important for everybody to feel that same way. I'm just getting started. Matter of fact, look, dude, how old are you right now? 33. Yeah, 33 years old. I'm 44. I want to be saying I'm just getting started until they bury me in the ground. I, if I'm 86 and I'm here, I'm going to be like, man, I'm just getting started, you son of a bitch. Because <laughs> I'm like, I'm coming. You know what I mean? It's like I... I pray that every one of you guys could heal, could, 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 could heal and change, but, and also feel this magical, I'm just getting started feeling. It's, a, it's, it's, it's the reprove state. It's understanding what's possible state, which is unlimited. You know, my favorite thing that you've said was, if you treat it like day one, there'll never be an end. Mm -hmm. And if you apply everything like that, like I treat the gym like, all right, this is like my first time working out yep. or like Sierra, all right, this is like the first time me and her are going to kiss. Like, mm -hmm. like, and just like trying to like every single day, like that reproof stage, like you're going to test yourself every single day and you're just yep. living for today. That's it. How can you make today like amazing? Yeah. There's no tomorrow. There's just today. Yeah. And Th think um, about it. He says, treat it like it's your last day. Treat it like it's your first day. Yes. Yeah. He said, if you treat something like at the beginning, like it's the beginning. Like the first day you started your job when you're like, I'm going to work my way up to the top. There'll never be an end. Like it'll never end. Relationships, uh, marriage, people, you know, they, they're going to counseling. Well, if you just treated each other like you did the first day you met, it'll you, be very different. You, you guys would fall back in love pretty quick because you guys really liked each other back then. So just treat each other like you did that day. Right. And uh, common sense, man. We live in a world right now where everything is so complicated you know, it's just get around good people, go to the right places. If you don't like where you're at, just uproot and move somewhere else. Become a new person. No big deal. Um, and you need some new information. And lastly, I think, get close to God. Yes. And, you know, a lot of people Amen. don't know how to do that. They're like, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not real big into religion. Me neither. But I want a relationship with God. And I think that, you know, I don't, I've never, I don't have a lot of religious friends but I have a lot of people that are really close to God around me. And that's all we need. And so make sure you guys uh, hit him up. Give him a follow on Instagram. He's always dropping great content, sharing a story, changing people's lives. He's super cool. Um, also, if you want to directly reach out to him, shoot him a text message. Love you guys, Thomas. Appreciate you, man. And uh, we'll make sure that we drop lots of pictures. And uh, you've seen him by this point of your journey. So yeah. make sure you get those to Sean. I will. Because I want him to see him. All right, love you guys. Have a blessed day. Love you guys. See you in the next podcast. Hey guys, looks like you made it to the end of the video. You're the true point zero 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 one percenters. Look, I know one percenters that can make it halfway through the video, but making it all the way through, you guys are the best. Now. Here's what I'd like to do. Number one, I want to get closer to you. The fact that you made it all the way through the video, you're like, man, dude, I want to roll with this guy. Okay, so I need to connect with you. Down below, there's a description box on this YouTube video. There's a link. It says coach with me one-on-one, -on -one, okay? If you'll go and you'll enter your information, I'll reach out to you in the next 24 hours. You can tell me what you need help with, what your goals are, and we will crush it together. I would love to help you guys go to the next level in life. You can tell I'm changing my life really fast, and I know that you guys want the same thing. I'd love to go with you on that journey. So right now, if you'd like to partner with me, team with me, if you want me to help coach you and push you, everybody needs a coach, a higher level of accountability to go to the next level. Go to the description box below, click on the link, fill out your information. I'll talk to you in the next 24 hours. Let's kill it.